The next discussion is uh, PowerPoint 33, Chapter 33, Equal Employment Opportunity, and it does dovetail uh, into the prior chapters. Again, I'm not going to be very detailed here. I think the book does a very good job uh, presenting this material to you. Uh, again, this is for folks who are in, mostly in human resources, again, take a human resources class um, if this is your field. Um, I do want to mention that there's a lot of litigation surrounding these areas. Uh, for instance, on slide six, uh, what is the reasonable accommodation to folks who are working who hold sincere religious beliefs? And uh, again, uh, it is a, almost a case-by-case -case area. Facts can uh, vary greatly from case to case. So in that matter, you look to the precedent of prior decisions by courts. Um, there is more to be done, I think, in the federal area as well as the state uh, on discrimination regarding uh, gender. And you'll see more and more of that coming in. Um, I, I want to mention that no matter what the basic test is, uh, whether it's a hostile work environment, quid pro quo for sexual harassment, whether it is uh, discrimination based on uh, race, religion, national origin, um, <clears throat> there are two basic areas where the courts look, and just think of this as an overarching test. One, was there specific discrimination? What did the supervisor say directly to the employee? what was done in terms of not hiring uh, women, uh, what not promoting women in certain positions when otherwise when they're otherwise qualified and men were promoted. There's, there's basically a specific standard. There is also a second standard, not just what happened in that case, of statistics. And so with statistics, does the company overall not hire or promote women within? Are they uh, discriminatory in their approach towards uh, certain race issues. So statistically speaking, uh, you can also challenge a company's actions in EEOC. So let me review. Specifically and statistically, there are two basic areas for the courts to test whether or not a company is in compliance with equal opportunity laws. Um, so as we move through this, I want to mention that um, uh, uh, there are certain types of, um, uh, um, I'm sorry, certain types of uh, how you can get out of uh, 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 ace in the hole cards, uh, defenses, I'm, I'm sorry, that was the word I was looking for. There are four types of, there are certain types of defenses that you can use as a company. And these you have to be careful of. Uh, for instance, on page 17, the book talks about, or the slide talks about business necessity. And even though it might be a business necessity that the corporation would say, Here's our reason for discriminatory practice. It has to be a very good business necessity defense, a very solid, uh, non-laughable reason in this area. Uh, it cannot be these, this area, for instance, uh, a pretext, uh, a made-up reason to then discriminate. Uh, I had worked for a, a client who was let go with five other individuals, all of them white except for my client who was African American. And this was a blue collar business working with HVAC, heating, ventilation, air conditioning. Um, within two weeks, the four white workers were rehired at the same level, uh, and even back pay was reinstated for some. But my client was not rehired. Um, obviously, we went to the EOC Commission to question this. Uh, we did get our letter of right to sue, and that moved the matter forward to begin uh, negotiating with the company for back pay and other damages. Because even though the company said, oh, we had to let people off, we had to lay off folks because of a downturn in our business, um, it was really a pre their answer was really a pretext to, to firing uh, the one worker who was a minority race. Uh, as his in his African American status, so you know, be careful with these. Uh, they have to hold water. They are not something that only that, that that your rationale is not something the courts have to believe. The courts are free to choose their own rationale and understand what is happening in reality. Another one, a second one on page 17, is a bona fide occupational qualification. And again, I would go to the case law on these. There are many areas where. 
this has been tested. It's not that you can just go out there and begin to sort of limit people based upon age, especially in violation of the Age Discrimination and Employment Act. Um, you, you, you need to look at these through the wide lens of an attorney. Hire that attorney, get that advice, so that it can be truly a bona fide qualification. Uh, seniority systems, this also works in, uh, in, in or dovetails or in context with uh, unionization because there are labor laws that allow seniority systems such that basically uh, certain individuals can be laid off, uh, certain uh, collective bargaining agreements does permit this. So just be careful of this one and make sure again that you're within the norm. Um, the last one, I think, speaks for itself, which is after acquired evidence of an employee misconduct. So again, the book, I think, does a very good job. This is all I'm going to basically highlight, and good luck.